Hello, everybody. This is Kevin Ioli at Yahoo Sports. UFC 219 is in the books now, and Chris Cyborg Justino is still the UFC Women's Featherweight Champion. It was an awesome fight in the main event at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Cyborg defeated Holly Holm by unanimous decision. I hope you got a chance to see the fight. Uh, I, I don't think the card overall was great from top to bottom. I probably rated uh, two and a half stars out of five. Uh, there weren't a lot of really exciting fights in the show, but the final two fights of the night really did deliver. Uh, Khabib uh, defeated Edson Barboza by unanimous decision in a very dominant performance, uh, a wonderful grappling uh, performance. And then uh, Cyborg and Holly Holm put on an incredible fight in the main event that Cyborg won by unanimous decision. I scored at 49-46 for Cyborg. I gave Holly Holm round one, and I very nearly gave her round two, but I did decide finally to give it to uh, Cyborg. Uh, and then I gave, for sure, rounds three, four, and five uh, to uh, Cyborg to get the 49-46 score. Uh, going into the fifth round, though, if Holly Holm had won the fifth round on two of the judges' scorecards, she would have won the championship. That's how they had that fight. Very close. Uh, and Holly performed very well, but I do think that the uh, winner was justified. So what uh, what is next for Chris Cyborg? It's really hard to say, and that is what is so sad about this. I think the performance she gave last night showed that she is an elite fighter, one of the best fighters in the world. There had been this perception of her going in, I think, that she was just so much bigger and so much stronger than everybody else that she overwhelmed everybody with her size and strength. And she showed in the fight against Holm how good she is as a technical fighter. I mean, she fought a brilliant fight. Uh, Holly was circling, and Cyborg was just able to negate her kicks. Holly's kicks weren't a real big factor in the fight because Chris was watching for them and knew how to defend against them. Uh, and she was sensational in terms of delivering her own offense. You know, it wasn't the cyborg we're used to seeing where she drops her opponent several times, does a little bit of ground and pound, and then climbs the cage and celebrates. I mean, she knew that she had to use her whole bag of tricks. And the other thing was, when the fight got into the championship rounds, she was just as fresh as Holly. Everybody knew that Holly Holm could go five rounds hard. The question was, could Chris Cyborg do it? She proved definitively that she could. Now, the issue from my standpoint looking at it is, who does she fight? There is nobody else in the division. Amanda Nunez, uh, who is a fantastic Bantamweight champion, she's kind of made noises about potentially fighting Holly. Um, do we really want to see that? Uh, Chris said she would fight her, although she said she preferred not to fight another Bra uh, Brazilian. Uh, Megan Anderson is the only other fighter that the UFC has signed to the division, and her status right now is up in the air. We don't know what she's going to do. Uh, she has had some personal issues. She was supposed to fight Chris at uh, UFC 214. Uh, she had to pull out of that fight, and she hasn't been back yet. Um, I asked Chris about that at the post-fight press conference, and she said she wasn't worried about it, that she felt like uh, two things would occur, that you know a, a challenger would arise maybe from boxing or uh, the UFC signing uh, athletes from other organizations. It's going to require patience on her part. I hope that the division does build because she deserves it. When you have a great champion like that, and make no doubt about it, she is a great champion then I think you need to have the best challengers for her so that you can really fully see how good she truly is. Uh, it was a tremendous performance by Chris Cyborg, and congratulations to her. Uh, in terms of uh, Khabib Nur Nurmagomedov in the uh, co-main event, I just was mightily impressed with what he did. You know, I expected him to beat Edson Barboza. Uh, his grappling is uh, next-level grappling, but... He just delivered so much punishment. He was so good in so many areas, and I think he's going to be a nightmare matchup for anybody. I think Tony Ferguson would match up a little better with him because Tony has the ground game, the great grappling, than Conor McGregor, the uh, light, uh, lightweight champion. Tony is the interim champion, but I think, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a tough fight for either of those guys. I wrote a column about that after the fight, and I mentioned that uh, Khabib said he wanted to fight both of them in the same night. He said, hey, UFC, 
give me one of them early in the night, give me an hour or two to rest, and then I'll take one later in the night, and I'll beat them both in the same night. And when we in the media laughed at that, he said, I'm serious, and he was very insistent. So, you know, he's a confident guy. Um, my other thought about the show last night was about Carlos Condit. Uh, Carlos returned to the cage uh, on a two-fight losing streak. It was the first time since August of 2016 when he was choked out by Demi and Maya. And he just did not look like the same guy I remember at his peak. I, I've covered Carlos Condit for years. When he was in the WEC, I was covering his fights. And uh, not only is he a very smart fighter, a, he's always a very explosive fighter. And he just looked at uh, step slow did not seem the same guy that I've seen, and I wonder if we're going to see him again. You know, a lot of times people say when a fighter loses a fight, well, it's time for him to retire. And I have to admit, it crossed my mind, you know, is Carlos Condit ever going to be the same? He might decide to retire and not have to be told uh, because he just doesn't seem to be the same guy that he once was. He's now lost three in a row. Certainly his fight with Robbie Lawler uh, that he lost at the beginning of 2016 was a sensational fight. He got choked out by Maya fairly quickly. He didn't take a lot of punishment in that fight uh, and then uh, got beat. And I, I don't want to say he took a tremendous amount of punishment against Neil Magny last night. He did not. He just did not look like the powerful, explosive, natural-born killer that we've come to uh, respect in the UFC for so long. So I think Carlos Condit's future is up in the air. Uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, He's a smart guy who can do a lot of things outside the cage. And uh, we may have seen the last of him. If we have, it, it's sad. It'll be the end of an era. He's, uh, he represents what I like about a fighter. He's a hard-nosed guy that goes all the time. He gives you everything he has in the cage. But he's not a brute. You know, he's a smart guy uh, who, who's well-spoken, who has interest beyond fighting. But he is a fierce, tough fighter. So if that was it for Carlos Condit, I wish him congratulations on his career and all the best in retirement. Uh, and if it wasn't it, I hope he comes up with something and figures out why he's been subpar these last couple fights and is able to fix that so that he does get back and can perform at the level that we're used to seeing him. UFC 220 is next, and you know what that means. The big heavyweight title fight. Boy, I cannot wait. Uh, in Boston next month, uh, it's going to be Stipe Miocic against Francis Ngannou, and that is going to be an unbelievable fight. I don't remember when I've been uh, awaiting a fight as much as this one. Uh, both guys, I think, are really top-rate fighters, and UFC 220, I think, is going to be something else, plus the uh, light heavyweight title fight on there as well. Stay tuned for that. We'll have a lot of content on that coming up. I appreciate you joining me. Once again, I am Kevin Ioli. If you would do me a favor and please subscribe to this video, it would help me a lot. And you can follow me on Twitter at Kevin I. And of course, read all my content every day on Yahoo Sports.